Okay, welcome to part two of our UI. And just to remind you of where we left off, um, we have a game over screen. It's the very first thing that we did, and we've got these buttons that um, become focused and don't work. So let's make them work. And uh, in the process of doing that, I'm gonna show you a different way of um, uh, kind of making your UI interactive. Um, and that's through variables and something that may may look very similar to uh, blueprints because it is. Uh, so let's go to interfaces. We're dealing with our game over um, display here. And the goal, um, this first part of the video is just to get uh, these two buttons hooked up. Um, so what I want to do first is, you know, like on the left hand side, they're not named well. So um, this text box is fine, but this button, we want to rename it. So if you look in details, it says button underscore zero. I'm going to rename that retry button. And the other one I'm going to do is this button one, rename it uh, main menu button. Okay. And so when you create a button, uh, by default, it's going to have this is variable checked and making it like so if you look at text boxes they don't have that checked but buttons do because they're so they're, they're used all the time to do something when you click on them so their unreal engine will make them into variables so if we go to our graph um, let's delete some of these so if we go into our main graph here you see they're already set as variables um, and so we can grab those variables and uh, say, you know, when they're clicked, what do we want to do? Or, you know, not just clicked, all sorts of stuff, like clicked, pressed, released, hovered, unhovered, um, all of that. So what I want us to do is, um, let's grab each of them. So, well, we don't grab them, we actually say on clicked. So I'll select that one and choose on clicked, and I'll select the retry button and I'll on clicked as well. So when clicked, we want to do some stuff. Um, so what we want to do on click for main menu, um, we haven't really, we haven't hooked that up yet, but it'll be the same thing we use with retry. Um, so the function we're looking at is called open level. Um, and what open level does is it will open whatever the level is, the, the name of that particular level. Um, and in this case, you know, we're not passing a particular level in. If you had many levels, we'll need to programmatically pass that level in, and I think you might even be able to get current level, um, get current level name, and then that'll return that here. Okay, I just did it. Fine. I was going to have us type it in, but we can do that for the main menu. Okay, so what this should do is when we click the retry button, whatever level we're in, it'll just open it. And open it basically will open it from scratch. And so if we compile this, we press play, and we let ourselves get hit, and we choose the retry button, and we just, yeah, perfect. And so it reopens the level, which is essentially akin to retrying in my mind. Um, and that's kind of cool because now it doesn't matter what level you're using, uh, so you, if you do end up having multiple levels, that retry button will work. Um, good. Okay. So, like, if that was it, the the the, the video is over. But we need to add some more. Um, we need to we need to hook up this main menu. And to hook up the main menu, we need a main menu. Um, and you might be thinking, well, I could just make a you know, let's make a widget here. Let's name it W underscore main menu. And let's just show that. Um, and that could work um, if you want, but um, not. it's not the way that I actually like to do this. And that's because if we go to Edit and Project Settings, you look under Maps and Modes, which should pop up in a second, um, we have the Game Default Map. Um, and you don't want to have the, at least in my mind, I don't want the game default map to be this map. And then immediately when somebody opens this game, they're just thrown in here and just facing this type of, you know, behavior. I don't think it's good. So, um, it's not fun. So we want, um, it, we want a different level. So we're going to add a new level here. So we have levels and we have this sandbox level. Let's save everything here. 
yeah, when you click that, you see all this stuff. You're like, wait, we should have saved it earlier. Um, save a lot because um, Unreal Engine does crash and it crash and it crashes and you've like lost a bunch of work and it's impossible to get it back. And then it asks you if you want to get it back and you say, yes, of course you, but then it can't get it back. So um, save a lot, always. So let's make a new level and I'm going to call this um, main, fine. I'll lowercase it. Okay, main. So we make a new level. Let's call it main. And let's open it. Yay, here we are. And this actually gives me an opportunity to show you another kind of way to do uh, interactivity and to, to build blueprints and things. And it's the level blueprint. And so if you go up here where it says blueprints and you open this, you see something that says like op open level blueprint. So a level blueprint is what it says, a level, a blueprint for the whole level. And many of the things you might have in your world outliner are available to you without having to cast and to do all those types of things. And quite a lot of things can be done within the level blueprint. And it's like a, it's something I avoid, to be honest with you, but it's fine. I mean, and especially in this case, um, in our level blueprint, what I'm gonna wanna do is, let's open this. When we begin play, we've seen this before, we want to widget, we want to create a widget and um, it will be our main menu and we need to then add it to our viewport add to viewport okay and we also saw a couple other things that we made that were like nice to have in fact very useful like we need to show the mouse cursor set show mouse cursor um, I think it's set show, show I think it's set show mouse cursor, but I'm not 100% positive. I mean, I think it is at least. Um, it, it totally is. It's just like we may need to get the player controller first. Oh, yeah, do this. Um, uncheck context sensitive, and then you'll get it. Set show mouse cursor. Got it. Okay. Um, let's compile and get an error. Yes, okay, um, because it's uh, not a player controller, because it's a level blueprint, so we can just get the player controller controller here, and then um, we should be fine. Save. Okay, great, so that'll work. Uh, and so just so you know what that does, that level blueprint itself, it's not a blueprint that we made, it just is in the level. Um, that, level that level blueprint will just show the show that widget that we're going to make in a second. Um, so let's go ahead and clean some things up here. Okay, save, done, done, done. Interface, main menu. So we've got a main menu. Good, good, good. Um, so I want to do something similar that we did last time, which is let's add a border. I don't really need a border. I actually feel like, no, whatever. We can add a border and it can just be like completely see-through. Um, so under brush, um, double click that and just take our opacity and make it zero. Just gives us the option later on. And just so you know, I took the anchor and, and did a shift and control to have it fill the entire screen. Um, and then what else I want is, I, yeah, I liked that. I liked what we had in the game, game over menu. I think that was a good thing. So. That meaning a uh, vertical box. And so we can have a vertical box in here. And then let's add a, um, we had a text box here. Text box, and then we had some buttons. Let's do some buttons. So buttons that I want. Um, well, I definitely want a button that's to play the game and maybe make an exclamation mark there. So that's our play button. Um, oh, I don't need an exclamation mark in the, that. I'll have it in the text. And then I want another button for um, options. So that's options button. Oh, we should keep with this whole like, you know, play, play button, options button. Because it's just the variable name, right? 
and that options button will have some text as a child of it and then yeah a little quit button okay and that's a quit button and it will also have some text great um, and let's set the text that we have here so this text is not text block it is play and then we can have our exclamation mark there and this one we'll say options great and quit no quit okay and we can do the same thing with the vertical box which is where we had it horizontally aligned like that just to make it look good and then text block it's called taco treasures great um, did I just put it in the wrong place I did I don't need to have that it's yeah uh, taco treasures okay and then let's add some padding to the top so let's say 10 um, 10 and then 10 here so it's obvious they're buttons um, and for this one I think we will um, let's take our hover and just go our whole style thing and collapse that and we want background colors to make it black and that's what I'm thinking about here okay and then another one make it black okay and I guess what I'll do also is let's add another let's add a horizontal box here um, I wonder if we can do it under the vertical one or under the border yeah we can add it here and I would like it to be anchored um, to the lower right here and some text underneath um, and the reason I'm going to add this it should become apparent in a second is um, and let's have it uh, fill that and it should also justify um, left justify here so um, it's very strange let's see um, auto yeah it's like not justifying properly uh, let's see oh wait it's because of that here anchors let's see all right um, let's just type some things because I want it to be like the the you know basically the same treasures v alpha one right alpha one so we know what the version of that is okay and then this might need to fill yeah size to content okay just so you know what I did there I was trying to you know get this to size to its content and there's a button right there that says size to content um, and then in that text we don't need to have it so large I can make it smaller like 10 point font 12.14 okay um, is that okay it seems okay all right yeah fine size y none of that matters okay great okay so that's our I mean that's our main menu uh, let's go ahead and test it right so what what should happen um, is and let's actually test this by going back to our sandbox level and also back to our uh, Let's press P to get remove that um, nav mesh, and also back to in our interface, back to our game over interface here. And if you recall, we had plugged it, we had plugged in the the um, the retry button, but we didn't plug in the uh, the main menu one. So we can do that now. Just use open level, and we know the level name, right? It's main main, 
and then save that. And so if all goes according to plan, when we're hit here, we will get our menu and then we can choose main menu, which should open up that main menu. And then when it does open up the main menu because the level blueprint and its begin play node has uh, is calling this widget um, and put, putting it to the viewport, then we should see the, the main menu that we made. And we do, which is really neat. Uh, but there's a problem. Um, so if I'm looking here, what do I see? Well, a couple of things. One, I, I wasn't, I'm not able to see my mouse cursor. It's disappeared. Uh, two, I still see my score and my, um, my hearts. So that's bad. So that's something that we need to, to handle actually in our game over menu. Um, and the way that we can do that is we go to our graph here. Um, when we click either any of these, retry or open level, I mean retry we don't need to probably do this, but open level we obviously do something called remove from parent. And so what remove from parent will do is it will take the widget and it will remove it, basically removes that widget itself. So that should fix our first issue. Um, and we need to go back to our level here because it moved us. So we'll go back to sandbox level, press play, get our menu, click main menu, and we still see it. Why do we still see that? It's so bad we shouldn't see it. You know why we still see it? Well, I do, because second problem is if we look in our world settings, um, well, actually, if we look in our pro project settings, we have underneath maps and modes, our game mode, um, has this uh, player controller and the player controller here um, is actually getting placed in the um, main menu and when it is placed in the main menu it's creating this heads up display we don't want that and so one of the best and we also don't want it there because it's a main menu and we don't want anything moving around so uh, the way we can handle that is if we uh, we're in our main menu here. You can tell because it's, well, actually, let's open up. Yeah, we can tell because we're not in our main menu because it's at level. Uh, and we can use game mode override. So if you go to world settings, game mode override, and then this regular game mode um, is probably fine because it will include like a player controller class that we never implemented. So we don't need to worry about that um, heads up display getting called. Um, and if we play this, there's our, you know, that's we're playing it within that level. There's our um, our menu here, but we've got that same situation where we're trying to, we're trying to, the mouse cursor is there, but I've got to click to get it, and then it's gone when I do. So we should handle that, um, that ha handle that as well in the uh, level blueprint. So I'm, you know, here in my main main menu, I go to open level blueprint. Let's see. We're, oh. And we should make sure we show the mouse cursor. Um, and then we need that last part, which was the input mode, right? Input mode, UI only. Um, and we can take our player controller. And then it wants a widget to focus. Um, and so we can right click off this and promote to variable. And this is our, um, maybe we say main menu widget. Good. And then just kind of move things around so we can make sure we set this. All right, we want to set it. Okay. We can do that. Or we could have just dragged all the way over there. Depends on what you really want to do. Uh, great, super good. Okay, so let's play it and test. Okay, I've got my mouse cursor. I don't have any of mine like hover effects, so that doesn't look just doesn't look good. So we'll do that very quickly. Um, going here to our button style hovered um, tint. What about that? I'm just going to choose that as the tint and see if I like it. Play. No, it's not even working. So why is that? Why is that happening? 
Um, oh, because it's tint, and we don't want that. Um, we want color and opacity. Sorry. So we can go back here. So, because that's background color. So color and opacity. That's of the text. We don't want that one. Background color. Um, if background color is white, and then tint can be that. Okay. It's much better. Okay. So I'll describe what I just did here. Um, so um, instead of setting the background color, um, which we had done in, on the game over menu here, um, where we said, um, you know, here's the background color, and then there's these, you know, the tint that we're using just being black, which worked for us going one way, but it's not going to work the other way here in the main menu because uh, that's just tinting it. Um, and so when we had a background color that was black, trying to tint it at anything is not going to work, um, at least tinting it at any color like this, because it's all going to end up just being black. So um, for this particular case, I'm going to go into each style. So this normal style here, the tint can be black um, for this button. And let's select all these buttons so we're not doing this over and over again. So I'm holding control and selecting all these buttons here. Um, Right, and so for the normal style, it says multiple values. I should be able to change this all to um, the RGB value here, which is just zero, at least to get that done. So zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that tints all of those. And then for hovered, we also have multiple values. It's faster for me to just go in here and select that because we have it right up here. So that's the hovered value there. That's the hovered value here. Okay, save it. Go here, play. Did, oh, we didn't get those other ones. Okay, let's make sure because they still have that other background color. Okay. And then we make the background color white and they should be actually they should get the tint. We're looking for Okay, um, that's nice. Um, they're not, it's not doing anything, but it's definitely nice. And we can make, I mean, we can make some of this stuff already, already work um, if we want. And so the first one we can do, uh, just to try to do this quickly, so I do not bore you, um, we go to graph and we have all these buttons here. Um, I'm gonna handle the options button in the next video. Um, but that options button is going to enable us to um, to uh, control the resolution. Basically, have different options for resolution for people's monitors and stuff. Um, so for the play button, let's handle that one on click. Oh, and the quit button is going to be pretty simple. Let's handle that one. Uh, so for the play button, um, all we want to do is just open level. And we could imagine a level select or something, um, but you know, in this case, uh, we know that it's called sandbox. And we know to remove from parent. Otherwise, it, the widget will stay on top. OK, so that's the play button. Quit button should be easy when we quit. Quit game, right. Instead of doing that, I'm going to do something called execute console command. And so there are lots and lots of different console commands. It's actually how we're going to set our um, resolution. And this console command um, for quit is, well, let's quit. Right, and we don't have to remove anything from the parent because it's just quit the game. It will quit the, the engine too. Well, not the engine, but it will quit the engine. I mean, it'll quit this, the play, the play status it has. So if I click quit, quit, done. I don't like that, I like white, white here. I'll deal with it later. Um, all right, I like this a lot, though. So now you see we're kind of getting into like these are all my these are my preferences. So you should choose your own colors. You can choose your own text, whatever. But um, uh, that's something I'm definitely going to change. And we press play. Boom, we play, and we're dropped into the level. It's really unfair. And then we can click main menu, and we go back, and we can just yeah, just do that over and over again until we're done with it and we quit. 
so that's actually like I think enough for this video um, because now you can see we're like actually getting to a, a, a situation where we have a, a, a gameplay loop. Um, so in the next video, what I'm going to implement is a pause button or a pause menu. Um, and I'm also going to implement our options menu. And from that point, I think we will have we'll be able to at least call our UI um, pretty much complete or complete enough that you'd have enough tools um, to be able to build your own. Thanks.